go for. I can. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Julie, let's start with you. Uh, okay. this is Julie of Wool Zone. Um, when she starts speaking, will it zoom into you when it starts speaking? Yeah, just a minute, I'll do that. Uh, Julie, hello. Hello, hello, Nick. Hello, everybody. And uh, welcome to the Extravaganza Day. Yeah, uh, Julie is in Rutland. Yeah. England's which is, smallest county. Which is east of Leicester, for, for everyone who doesn't know that. <laughs> and, and not many people do. And Julie is uh, indeed the person behind Woolzone, which is a, a great real shop, a bricks and mortar <laughs> shop, and, and an online shop. shop. <laughs> and um, this theme, the theme of this interview is kind of um, wool and yarn shops. So um, Julie and Kath, who will talk to very quickly very soon uh, they run bricks and mortar ones michelle only runs an online show <laughs> <laughs> you're such a rogue <laughs> okay uh, so here she is michelle hello how are you doing i'm good hi nick yes hi. i do i run my my fake on my fake wool shop online <laughs> <laughs> and it is called tell us what it's called so I look after the loveliest yarn company um, and I also have Banshee Yarns as well. Sorry, what was that second one? Banshee Yarns. Banshee. Yeah, with yeah. the loveliest yarn company. So they're yeah. all together. Yeah. Which is why uh, we see we'll chat more about that soon. Let me just introduce everybody. Michelle's in southeast Derbyshire, if you want to get your geography. Yeah, so quite close to um, Julie <laughs> and very close to me in Nottingham. Hello, Kath in North Morning. Yorkshire. Morning, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, Kath's in Leyburn, which was flooded. Was it last year it was flooded? It, Leyburn was flooded last year, yeah. Um, I actually live over in, in Reith in Swaledale, so I was flooded in the shop and flooded in my house as well at the same time. Yeah. Same day. So, so we're still recovering for that. We're still not home yet, but um, shop's open. It's been open quite a while. Well, <laughs> although it's not open because of COVID, but yeah. it had opened. <laughs> So you're still not home? No, no, no. Oh gosh, yeah. No, the builders started about February time and then had to stop, so they've just started again. So hopefully, 12 months to the day, we're hoping to be back home again. So end of July. Yeah, great. Fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, yeah. so um, we've introduced ourselves. Um, yeah. And let's go, should we go back to Julie and ask, okay. how did you begin wool zone and why did you do wool zone and what right what well, did you do before <laughs> well before i was head of department in the university and i took voluntary redundancy and to start and i've always wanted to have a wool shop i mean it's been one of those things um ever since i can remember really i think i started knitting when i was about seven um and when I took redundancy, I started with an online shop. So watch out, Michelle. Could be the bricks and mortar next. Um, and did that for a few years and then just thought, no, it's still not quite what I had in mind. And um, Oakham is probably my nearest town to where we live. And I was wandering around there one day and I just saw a little handwritten sign in a very tiny shop window saying, if you want to rent this property, uh, ring this number. And so that's what I did. And I thought, even if I only do it for six months, I can say I've had a wool shop. And that's what I did. And six years on, uh, last year, I expanded into the shop next door to the tiny shop. And just as lockdown happened, I signed the lease on a new bigger shop around the corner. So I haven't been able to open that one yet, but that one will be opening when I can reopen. Well, that's quite that's astonishing, good. Julie, because um, I've been to Oakham and there's only six shops in Oakham. So we'll, <laughs> we'll practically the whole is becoming wool. It's not, you'll, ex, you'll change the name from Wool Zone to Wool Town. <laughs> yeah, something, yeah. Be like the Rick Stein of Padstow. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. it's doing well, or it was doing well. I mean, well, touch coping? wood. Touch wood, yeah. How are you coping with the um, COVID? nightmare well online online sales have been very good actually uh, i think a lot of people have taken up knitting and crochet during lockdown so um yeah touch wood it's it's been okay and then it's just you know it's kind of going into the quiet time now traditionally anyway for the summer 
so we're just going to keep an eye and see what happens. And we're all missing going to wool shows as well, aren't we? We are certainly missing going to wool shows as well. Because, yeah, I do about 12 wool shows a year as well as the shop. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, very much missing those. But this online one's a good substitute, I think. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. We all think so. <laughs> um, I should say that all these lovely people and everyone I'm interviewing is on the online version uh, and you can see and many of them have got discounts and special offers today so uh, you'll be able to see uh, those if you go on the do -do -do website um okay kath let's come back to you can i mean when did you start why did you start what were you doing before well i i um took over the wool shop four years ago I went to a long wool sheep shop four years ago it's actually been running since 19 1989 so it's it's just over it's 31 years this year so it's had my I'm wow. third owner of the shop um and I was I worked in the NHS for 24 years up until up until buying the shop and it wasn't that I was unhappy in the NHS this this temptation appeared presented itself and I just could not let it go I think if I hadn't have done it I would have always regretted not not buying the business and, and, and not doing that. So, um, so as I say, I was very, very happy in the NHS and um, somewhat missing it at the moment, bizarrely, because I think, um, you know, that, that, that whole, whole thing about helping people and, and, and seeing your colleagues go through what they're going through at the moment, you just, you just really want to be there and, and, and sort of being part of it and supporting them really. So it's, it's a funny thing. Um, but anyway, I took, you know, took the shop over four years ago and we moved it into the centre of Leyburn in Wensdale from the farm where, where Anne, owned, Anne and Ruth owned the business ran it from before. So we, we, we've seen a, a gradual growth in the business um, and we, we do a lot more wool shows than, than previously. So we've, we've sort of engaged with a lot of new customers and we're gradually building, um, building the business up. So we, we sell our own brand of Wensdale um wool that we have we have spun um all very locally to us in in yorkshire um but we manage each we don't just go to the mill and get the whole end product we manage each each part of it so we will you know it'll sit at our dyes and we'll call the wool off in in smaller batches when we know what we've sold because we can never quite predict colors a funny thing people you know people never quite you know you can't tell what somebody's going to buy you think something's going to be really popular and then you find that actually it's something else so we do small batches um and then it goes to a baller we still ball our wool um so it goes to our ballers in in wakefield and then we bring it back to the shop um so we quite i guess we are a little bit unusual that we're not doing we're not doing the old artisan schemes but we're you know we, we, one day we might catch up <laughs> So tell me this, your shop's called Wensleydale Long Wool Sheep Shop. Correct. And it's in Leyburn, which is it's in Leyburn. north of Ripon, isn't it? Kind of. um, yeah, 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 it is. It is. Has anybody ever come in and said, can I buy a sheep? Well, yeah, yeah, lots of times really. <laughs> and we do have a little, we have a little sheep, little sheep, <laughs> little sheep we have lots of things. So we, we sell sheep skins and... Um, skincare and, and all sorts of sheepy related things as well because we do have a big tourist trade with it being you know at the bottom end of Wensterdale in the in the Yorkshire Dales we, we we get a huge uh, following from from tourists and people and I think I think it's the same with all wool shops though when people are on holiday Julie you know Julie will I'm sure will say yeah. this that yeah. people people will google wool shops in the area and they'll come and visit you because they're on holiday it's a, uh, you know, it, it, it's just something that, that happens really. So, so it'll be good to get open again once, once the, the thing's lifted. But uh, I think uh, that for this year, certainly tourism is, is probably out of the window to a certain extent. It'll be a bit more, yeah. more UK tourism this year. So you buy from the farmers in the area? Is it all Wensleydale sheep? No, well, for, for what we have spun, we, we buy from, from the wool bar because that's, we're buying, you know, we're spinning half a ton at a time plus um but we i do have uh, one or two farmers locally that i buy for they've got largish flocks um for, for when we when we wash the locks and, and we do bits for kits and things like that so we it, it's a mixture we buy what we can locally of Wensleydale's, but the rest you know for our for our commercial spin um comes from the wool board 
Great. So I should say we will be seeing some of the products of these wonderful. We will. We will. Soon. <laughs> it's not all <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, chat's wonderful, yes. Uh, Michelle, let's have some chat. Tell me, you, you do not have an, a Derbyshire accent, duck. So how did you end up? No, no, I'm not local originally. <laughs> well, so um, I ended up in Derbyshire. I was working for um, a Dublin company and I was working on a project in Leicester and I met Simon. And I moved here maybe 12, 11 years ago. And then I was working for the bank. And a bit like Julie, the opportunity came up to take voluntary redundancy. And I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> 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 I'm just not suited to working with, like, I just wasn't suited to working in a corporate environment anyway. And um, I, was, I really, I love knitting. I'd fallen back in love with it about when I'd moved here, actually. And uh, I started the loveliest yarn company just under four years ago. So we'll be having our fourth birthday in four weeks' time end of June. Yeah, and you, uh, do you mainly buy from people and then sell it on? I know you're a yeah. pattern designer as well. But yeah. So I started out buying from indie dyers I like myself and for yarns that I really liked. And it's kind of, that's stayed the main part of it. And then I started dyeing a year ago as bench yarns as well, because I kind of had it's a hard, it's funny because I think it escalates in different directions for everybody. You kind of like some people go from, I have a wool shop to owning an alpaca farm. <laughs> Sometimes you go from like owning a wool shop to being a dyer to then, you know, it kind of sort of changes over time. So yeah, I started dyeing about a year ago and then I do my own designs as well. Yeah, so it's kind of been four very interesting years. Um, and then shows wise, uh, which I'm so lonesome for shows. I must do, I think I do about 15 shows a year. Um, so it's been a bit of a... Oh, it's been a bit of a, um, a strange one. So I'm really glad to be here doing this one. It's really exciting. Yeah, we all um, go around the wool show circuit, don't you? Yeah. Bumping yeah. into the same face. <laughs> we all know one another. Yeah, um, I am. <laughs> some of the people on the online wool show do not do the circuit. Well, not yet. Uh, <laughs> but most, most of them do. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so... We're coming to a section I like to call, uh, call. <laughs> what do I like to call it? <laughs> Favourite product! Favourite <laughs> product time! Now, um, each lady has been warned to bring a favourite product. Julie, are you wearing your favourite product? Or... I am wearing my favourite product. This is, uh, I suppose, my favourite pattern of the year. And it's um, a cowl called the Shift Cowl. It's very popular on Ravelry, so loads of people will have seen it, designed by Andrea Mori. But why I love it is that I love knitting shawls, but I'm not that good at wearing them or styling them. I always have ends that I don't know where to put. So why this one is so nice is because it's not actually a shawl, it's a cowl. And if you can see, if I can show you there, it joins up at the back. So basically, you just shove it on, and it's done and uh, it's knitted in a slip stitch pattern so you're only using one color per row but you get loads of color changing effects by using color changing wool um, so I'm the sort of person I hate knitting two of anything I don't even like knitting the second sock but I've now knitted three of these in different colorways and I still <laughs> want to knit more and I love them um, so I've put together a kit of the ones that I've made. Andrea Mowry has given me kind of permission to include her pattern in it through the Ravelry in-store pattern sales. So that anyone who buys a kit gets the wool that I've used, which is Rico Melange DK. Not the original wool on, the, on Andrea's pattern, um, but um, this, I think it works really well. And they get a printed copy of the pattern as well and an email copy of the pattern through Ravelry. So um, that's my favorite product. The kit is 17.95. All three colorways are on the online motion website. Brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And that's, is that something you've knitted behind that you're sitting on as well? Oh, crocheted, crocheted behind. This is the Spring Garden um, blanket kit, which is a very simple, granny stripe crochet kit so very good for therapeutic sitting in front of the tv crochet all done in sock yarn 
So that's the kit as well, pattern and yarn, uh, 19 balls of yarn, so 43.50 for that one. Great, good. So do you do um, mainly knitting or mainly crochet or kind of 50-50? Probably mainly knitting. I'm, I'm a knitter at heart. Uh, I took up crochet about three years ago um, and I'm finding that quite addictive as well now. So, um, but I'm building up the crochet kits gradually. I've got more stock of knitting kits at the moment. Right. Thanks yeah. very much, Julie. And now, okay. Cass, do you want to do a favourite product? Well, I'll, I'll do the, the one we drag out all the time, which actually is probably not showing up awfully well on there. Is our is our barrel barrel jacket, which um, I think everybody's probably seen time after time, but it comes out and it is just such a proper popular product. I don't know if I can hold it up. It's a moss stitch. You can see that it's a moss stitch jacket oh, yeah. knitting knitting Wensterdale, and Wensterdale's just got that beautiful um, sheen to it. Um, you can see that there. It's just and it just you know it's fabulous with that with that pattern. So people time and time and time again come back and knit that so we put that on your online um website as a kit and price price varies so um depend on how many balls of wool between eight and ten balls of wool but so we, we would just need to calculate so i can't say a specific price on that so that's probably one of our favorites um one of the other things we've got which we're actually doing as um is, is a kit and um, which is 22 pounds and this is actually just some wednesday locks can you see that just knit into a knit into a cushion um, so we're giving away one of these to somebody. We'll do a draw today as part of, you know, anybody who purchases um, today will be part of that. But that's just a fun little project, really. It's a bit of a, almost like, Mon you know, there's Mongolian cushions, a bit like that, really. Um, so that's quite fun. And we do, we do have various colours in that kit. We've got the pinks, we've got the sort of blues, we've got the, the, the sort of browny mixes. And then we've got a lovely rainbow kit, which I've left in my shop window, unfortunately, so I can't show you that. But um, it is on it is on your, your site if you wanted to see that. Um, what else have you got? You, we are supposed to be just doing favourite product at the moment. Okie dokie. Well, we'll leave it at that then. For <laughs> sure we'll have time to come back to all your other products. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you ruin it. You ruin it. I was carefully planned <laughs> up all night remembering it. <laughs> yeah, up all night getting the online wool show ready for today. I bet. I bet. All the different changes. <laughs> oh, I was. I was doing it too, and then couldn't sleep. Uh, Michelle, enough about my woes. Michelle, mm. uh, favourite product. Yes. So I actually have a favorite, a brand new favorite product. It's actually only, I've only put it on the online world shows. I haven't added it to the main website yet either. So I'm really excited to have the Our Jody scarf kit from Bar MU. And they're kind of, so you get all of the yarn and you get extra yarn as well. So that's all, um, it's uh, the Bar MU British yarn. So it's gorgeous. It's their pip color work. And you get the pattern and it's set up to make this gorgeous scarf inspired by the doctor um who is from yorkshire which i didn't realize actually and uh, yeah so that's it that's the kit um i only have them on the online world show at the moment and it is 48 pounds but this week or today we have 10 percent off as part of the extravaganza <laughs> and it's a super cute kind of all-in-one kit Sorry, which i love i love the kit some reference is this some reference to doctor who yes no oh, i don't know i don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. But when you said Yorkshire, I thought, oh, yeah, but like, yes, we do have a Yorkshire. Oh, sorry, I'm from Yorkshire. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so are, you a, are you a bit of a sci-fi geek? I'm actually, I was, but now I just, I spend too much time. Just, I'm just a wool geek now. <laughs> well, you can be both. Then. I, know, I, know, I know a few people do. But... Wool has just taken over my entire life. Although I do want to learn how to crochet because I don't crochet. I'm more of a knitter. I do want to be able to make the um, the little crochet creatures, the word that begins with A that I can't say. And, and I know loads of Thank you. <laughs> Those little ones, like little torturos and stuff that people are always making out of the anime. Yeah. And people do make them. They're super cute. So I do want to be able to make those. But yeah, I'm not a, I'm, I used to be a big sci-fi fantasy reader, but not anymore. Uh, knitting. What else would you do? Like, <laughs> sorry, I started yeah. a text question oh, through, but it's my cousin saying it. You're looking great. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dave. Oh, you have moral support. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
but he helps us run the wool show spring in you've probably seen him you guys spring into wool and Southern. oh yeah yeah can i mention spring into wool and southern wool show um yeah. we still we had to cancel spring into wool this year uh i think you were all gonna be there weren't you kath yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Southern yeah. Wool show was supposed to be in early september in newbury um that's well we've all got our fingers crossed for that so anyway yeah. so yeah. yes thank you um so um julie let's come back to you okay interesting question for julie <laughs> i've always wanted to ask this question all right okay yeah <laughs> did your husband always look like billy Connolly? <laughs> he ha well he has since i've known him but he was in the air force for 38 years so used to have a very short back and sides and so didn't so he only grew his hair when he left but he's always looked like that since I've known him. Uh, yeah. So. And uh, was that the attraction? Um, <laughs> you said you roll. Partly, yeah. Yeah, I think it was actually, yeah. Sorry, this, sorry, sorry, this is, this is getting too personal, isn't it? No, not at all. into no. rudeness. Yeah. It's all right, he's out, I can say what I like. <laughs> yeah, so Kath, um, you had started to show us some of your other products. Uh, uh -huh. Can we see, can we see a few more? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, right, that's, I'll show you how I, I spent a lovely afternoon um, this week just making my colour charts. So that's, that's the full range of our, of our Wensdale colours that you can see, which are in um, R and double knitting and four ply. I've also been um, just playing a little bit with, um, with hand dyeing. So we've got a nice, a nice selection of four ply there um and once again you know the wensdale it's got that fabulous sheen on it so we've got a little bit of that that we've popped on your website as well and um, for more we've got in the in the clearance section of the website we've got some um merino roving wool which is absolutely super um so lots of lots of colours that that are out, which is quite a reasonably priced wool for doing blankets and bits and pieces. So, so sorry, Kath. Do you again? Do you do kind of mainly knitting or kind of fifty fifty with crochet? I would say mainly knitter. I'm knitting. I'm more a knitter. I've, I've knit since I was four years old. My, my great aunt taught me to knit, so and she died shortly after then. So um, I've knit for a long time and had that had that gap of once the children refuse to wear what I knit, um, <laughs> sort of stop <laughs> as they do. You know, they're going to sort of sweatshirts and things. They just don't want to know it. Um, so I stopped knitting for many many years and then started knitting with a, um, a Shep and shawl again for. One of the girls that used to work for me, uh, one of the secretaries that worked for me, um, and that's really what started it off. And it was actually in Wensdale Wool um, that, that I started. So that's what prompted me again. So I've only been knitting again probably for about six or seven years after that huge gap, but more definitely more knitting than crochet, definitely. Yeah. So I meant the products that that looked to me like crochet, but maybe it was. It is crochet. It is crochet. And that was, just, you know, that's just really a, a, a granny black blanket that we just did just really to, to show off um, this, this merino roving mohair wool that we've got on the website. Yeah. On your website, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle? Michelle, can I bring Michelle back in again? Uh, Hello. Other products other than sci-fi, <laughs> Doctor Who? Stop. I know. So this is my other favourite kit that I have and that is available on site. It is, uh, we'll ignore the ends because I think we're all knitters here. <laughs> this is the loop blanket. So it's super cute and it is knit in four ply. So you get plenty of knitting for your time. <laughs> um, and it has eight colours in it and it's from Camarose. So they're a Danish company and they bring their yarn in from Peru. Um, and it's a merino music free, obviously. And it's a super cute like a kit. I have three of those. They're on the site at the moment. So they're on the online world show. And then I have some other hand dyed yarns as well, which are my own. So I have some Banshee yarns, obviously. This is our brand new colorway. It's called uh, Wraith. 
Now we have Villanelle as well. So we have loads of pinks. I don't know where I was going with my pinks. I just had a pink day. And then I have some less pink days as well, which is much more like the Banshee Yarns colours, which are all kind of dark and shaded. Um, and I'm wearing a Banshee Yarns sweater, which is a love note in our silky singles and our mohair. So yeah, lots of different things. And then I have other, I have some more commercial yarns as well, like Coop Knits, which is on the website and the Camera Rose is all available as well. And it's all as individual balls. So, so lots people, of bits sorry, of people can buy the Banshee yarns on the... On, on the online wool show. Yep. They're right. in the shop. Yeah. Anything else to hand there to show us? Uh, no, I'm actually in the shop, but I'm kind of in the corner. <laughs> Very unglamorous, I have to say. Having a, like a, a there's a, diff, a big difference between having an online shop and a physical shop because it's it's definitely not as pretty as um, a wool shop. <laughs> yeah. So Julie, have you got some more products? I have. Yeah. Well, I've got a special offer, which um, again is only on the online wool show, isn't anywhere else. Is a mystery pack of three balls of opal sock yarn. So aimed at sock knitters really, but you can use it for anything. Um, but each pack, we choose the colours, so you don't know what you're getting. Um, but it's got a kind of re normal retail price for about £27. And doing it on, your sh on the online Wool Show website for £20, and you get a free sock pattern and a free glove pattern as well. So we've got a few of those left. So, Have we anything else to hand? Uh, not not to hand, but if you talk to Kath, I can go and get something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I should, I should just mention that... Um, but you literally we, see the favourite product of my special offer, so yeah. Let me just... Sorry, J Julia's got some wonderful videos. Uh, a lot of the um, uh, exhibitors on the online wool ship uh, have done videos, and Julie did, I think, five little videos, was it, Julie? Yeah, all in my shed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, yes. It was. My virtual wool show shed. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you can see more of her stuff there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Kath and Michelle are yet to do videos, so um, hopefully they will. Uh, hmm, I should say that this, no is promise. Being, this is being recorded for posterity. <laughs> 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 uh, so people can watch it at their leisure throughout the day and weeks and years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it should be here on the Facebook page and probably also on YouTube. We've now got a YouTube channel and um, whatever that means. And on <laughs> website, on the website. Uh, there's lots of other videos on the website and um, lots of free patterns and stuff. Michelle's got have you got, you've got a free pattern on there, haven't you? Miss? I do the sock pattern, the so uh, Socks of the Galaxy. <laughs> oh, yeah. A massive book of patterns. Like, was I allowed to make that available? Yes. Is that, uh, yes, you were. Is it, if it's not there, uh, it can be there. And I have kits for those on the website as well. Um, the pattern book is free. Yes, it was just so massive that um, I thought... It was probably, yeah. <laughs> it's a big pattern book. <laughs> A few years. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just wondering if there's been any comments or questions. Let's make the most of this liveness. Uh, let me ask my wife, Natasha, over there. Any? She can't see any. Okay. All right, okay. I, I got a, a comment popping up about, it was from Jacqueline. She said, um, Royal Mail aren't delivering to her or very patchy service. Um, do people send with through couriers? So, can I just ask, um, do you how are you sending? Do you send? Well, I've been sending everything Royal Mail, and although it's been taking a while for some people, uh, because they had a backlog and the sorting office having to social distance and stuff like that, people have been getting stuff, and more recently, they've been getting stuff quite quickly. Yeah, Michelle, yes, I'm, I'm fine, I'm finding the same. I've it was there was a while about three or four weeks ago where it was yeah. definitely it was taking kind of maybe 10 days for some parcels to go through but i've i've had nothing lost so far um yeah. things eventually do show up and cats yeah we're, we're the same like you know like like michelle said there, there was a time where particularly london funnily enough we had a few parcels sort of went into the into the ether for quite a while and i think 
think one parcel took nearly a month to arrive, but it did turn up. We're virtually on the point of replacing it, but, um, <laughs> but they are turning up. So we're doing a mixture of Royal Mail and for the larger parcels, if it's over two kilos, it's going courier. But it, it all seems to work. And actually, we've still been posting worldwide as well. So that, that you know, that we've not had a problem with that either. So perhaps we've been lucky, I don't know. Yeah. Julie, do you go worldwide? Because we may Yeah, have... I, go, I go worldwide as well. Some things, I mean, things are getting there. Again, some things were held in quarantine in the States and Canada uh, for a bit of time. So customers were contacting me to kind of find out and, you know, um, but again, they've got there now. So touch wood, things are getting better. Yeah. And Michelle, do you ship worldwide? Yes, uh, we do. Everything is tracked and signed though at the moment. Um, yeah unless it's under 20 pounds everything has to be tracked and signed because it, we are like there are things going to the us right that are taking up to six weeks but yeah definitely shipping everywhere for now yes so if you're outside the uk um quite i think three quarters of the companies on the online wool show do ship worldwide uh and so yeah i should be saying it in several different languages now <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on <laughs> English and gibberish, <laughs> <laughs> not the extent of my, yes. Um, right, has anybody got a question for somebody else? This is the section I like to call Nick's run out of questions. Right. So, Julie, have you got a question for uh, oh. Kath or Michelle? Um, and, and, um, not at the moment, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Anybody else? Caught us on the spot there, Nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah Nick, <laughs> <laughs> that's your eyes go. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, Michelle, your banshee yarns. People have a tendency to name the yarns, um, the colours. You know, like our Wednesday, we'll name it where we can, like you know, butter tubs after the butter tubs pass and low level salt and rust, which is the village. Do you name your banshee yarns after something that's personal to you, or? Yeah, so they're named, so Bench Yarns is, because I grew up in West Cork, so I'm Irish, obviously, I'm <laughs> definitely not from Darvish, it's not a Darvish accent. <laughs> not not <just> um, that. <laughs> Most of them are named after either their Irish words, so for example, this is Iha, which is knight in Irish, um, and they all, and Aragid is silver, so a lot of them are Irish names, um, and some of them are kind of haunted names, because like, West Cork is really beautiful, but like Irish tourism is all very shamrocky and green, but actually Irish lore is kind of haunting. So it's kind of, everything is named after that. All right, good. Yeah. Michelle, you mentioned Bill and Nerve is one of them. Is that Killing Eve? It is, yeah, because it ruined my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> my kitchen was like a pink, a pink crime scene. I was, yeah. it was desperate. I was like, I need to name this. I was like, oh, that's what it is. Some of them name themselves then as they come out right. of the pot. You're like, oh, yeah. that's what you are anyway. The place was destroyed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, flex, it is. Flecks of blood colored red running through. Yeah, there was pink everywhere. It was like, was okay. just, it had to be that. No, it was right. so funny. Blood red. Can do I ask you? Can I ask Catherine, went back to, you know, you said your shop was flooded, which sounds absolutely terrible. Mm. When, when you kind of redid it, did you make any changes to how it had been before or did you try and reconstruct what had we, been we, there? We, we did change a little bit. Um, we, just, we just made it, um, the shop space bigger, to be honest. Um, we'd, we'd had, uh, as I suppose a lot of wool shops use the big IKEA. You know, IKEA is fantastic for wool shop owners, isn't it? I think everybody's got the bags and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we, we just pushed everything back. So we've got, we've got quite a long space. And before we had, we had one of these IKEA units, which divided our space between our office. So we've just opened it out. So we now, we now have to be really, um, really careful about being tidy and keeping the desk tidy and everything, which is, which is a bit Ooh. of a struggle. And certainly yeah. it's a little, these last few weeks while we've been closed, so when we've done a live stream from the shop, it's I've spent probably half a day tidying up really because I just leave everything lying around because you can. But um, so yeah, it's it, we've we've got to be a bit more tidy. So we've just yeah we we altered it a little bit. It gave us an opportunity to refresh it. Thanks. Yeah. Good. I'm sorry if I looked blank or blanker than normal. <laughs> I'm just having a quick look at the Facebook page to see if there are any questions. 
I have a question for Julie, if that's okay. Right. Is there Oakham? Is there still a really nice curry place there? Because like I can then <laughs> tempt my husband to Oakham with the promise of food, and I can go for yarn. <laughs> yes, yeah. There are, in fact, there are two very nice curry places. Awesome. There you go. Yes, we, we were gifted a stay there one night before. Okay. I think possibly before you'd opened the Woolzone, zone, which obviously oh, that time. Right. Oh, I would definitely be going there. And I was like, oh, we found a lovely curry, so I can tempt him back now. Yeah, That's there we go. Oh, lovely to see you. Curry and yeah. yarn. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Look forward to that. So, when you open your, your new shop, Julie, are you just going to be in there, or are you, are you spreading out, or, or giving the other two up, or what, what are you doing? Are you Sorry, am I, am I doing what? When you when you when you finally get into your new your yeah. new premises, are you going to be running from there? Is it a yeah. bigger? Or it's a, it's a big. Well, at the moment, because I moved into where where I was, I moved into the shop next door, but they were two separate shops. Um, so I had right. kind of had two small shops, and I used one as a workshop for stuff like that. So this is a just yeah. a generally bigger space. Um, so yeah, I'll be operating from there. Still doing wool shows, I hope, but operating from the new shop. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know about workshops and exciting, things. Exciting, isn't it? It is very exciting. I just don't know what social yeah. distancing will mean for workshops. So do you uh, no. I mean normally do you do you run workshops? Do you yeah. yeah. Yeah, knitting and crochet ones we run. Yeah. Cass, do you do any workshops through the shop? We to be honest, we we just started, we've done one. Um and I do it with um and Michelle knows Helen Connington. Love Ellen. Um, she she did a feral workshop with us, uh, <laughs> and so we just started really. We had plans for more, and of course, you know, lockdowns meant that we 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 haven't been able to do it. But um, it's time constraints because we do a lot of you know a lot of wool shows, so it's it's balancing that time, and it it does take takes a lot of time to prep these things does, up and, does, and everything. Yes. So yeah. yeah, Michelle. Do you um, do real or, no. or online workshops? <laughs> so we're actually um, very exciting. On Monday, we're starting the, we're launching the knitschool.co.uk, which is the loveliest yarn company online membership for knitting. So we're launching Monday for founding members, which is very exciting. Um, and we're open until the end of May. And then in June, we're starting with master classes so it's going to be an ongoing kind of monthly subscription it was something that we've been, i've been thinking about for ages and obviously with shows being cancelled this has been like i was like well i'm gonna to have to do something <laughs> so yeah. yeah very excited oh, good luck. Good luck yeah. with that. thank you yeah. really i should excited. say i should say we also have <laughs> workshops that we uh through the online wall show uh, yes you know have some knitting ones going and we're hoping to expand that uh yeah i mean talking about uh, cancellation of wool shows and inspiring people to do different things that's what inspired me to do the on, the online wool show yeah. Uh, yeah as soon as spring into wool got cancelled i just I, i'd already had the idea and i just thought right let's do this thing so <laughs> yeah. and that was yeah launched about five weeks ago i think yes so um i think we're all up most up to our allotted time for today because um, there is another one at 11, if you can read that. Uh, if I can read it through the mirror writing, it says hand diners. Uh, so um, we have Erica from Debonair, we have Tina from Tina and Floyd, and we have Scott from Crystal Yarn, who's a, um, I guess none of you people have heard of him because he's, a new, he's new on the scene. Um, oh, right. Yes. I haven't met him, but we, I saw him on the online wood show. <laughs> it's a great place to find new people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we try and introduce, well, certainly in the new batch, um, quite a few new, um, smaller companies. Um, awesome. I mean, none of, none of the people on there are not huge. I mean, it's, it's almost always one person. Uh, but you have, there are people who are very busy and, and make a good living. And there are people who are just doing it part time or just starting out. So I think it's really good that we have a spread, uh, just as we do at our wolf shows. Um, just a minute. Oh, another message. No, it's my cousin again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think we'll, uh, I think we'll uh, say uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, well, thank, thank you. you. Live, okay. I've been watching the recording. Uh, it's been very nice to talk to Kath and Julie and Michelle, and I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Um, oh, yeah, Basnet. Message from Basnet. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> I think that's I know. Awesome. <laughs> so thanks Thank for you very much. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Nick. Michelle. Thanks. Have a lovely day. Um, and you too. We'll see repeat. you live all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got another four of these to do. So. We'll be yeah. watching you. We will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right then. Take care. Bye, buddy. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye then. Bye. Bye. How do I stop this? <laughs> See you. Bye. See you. Bye.